All right, as you guys see, I'm about to interview Lex Lang. Let's get started. Got a lot of questions. Well, 10 questions to be exact for this man. Let's get it. What's up, Lex? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. I have a lot of questions for you. Well, not a lot, but 10. To be exact. Okay. Well, let's 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 shoot. All right. What or who inspired you to become a voice actor? Well, like I say to everybody who asks me this question, yeah. Um, I've always been inspired to act. Like acting has always been what's really exciting to me as a person so since I can remember I've been interested in acting yeah um, I had a little taste of doing some voice acting when I went to the Musicians Institute yeah. in Hollywood mm -hmm. I, I, I did their um, sort of their educational video that they have and I was also the spokesman for the school so um, I got to do a little voice acting like narrating there but I also did a stand-up I used to tour doing stand-up comedy, and um, I used to do a lot of celebrity impressions during the act, and the way that I was kind of pointed into the voiceover world was I was on a movie set with a, a girl named Amy Jo Johnson, yeah. who uh, used to play the Pink Power Ranger many years ago, Yeah. and uh, she said, boy, you'd be, a I was doing my routine, you know, from the comedy show yeah and and she said you'd be a fantastic voice actor you can do all these voices you should try it so um, she introduced me to a guy named Paul uh, I mean uh, Scott Pactor who was the producer for Power Rangers and uh, he hired me in their Walla group which is just the loop group that is all the extra stuff and um, that was my first sort of foray into the voice acting world then I got a couple of characters and then I kind of branched out from there it's interesting okay yeah. so for my second question and this is probably a dumb question but do you feel as though all of your work has paid off or is paying off paying off in what way like do you feel like it's worth it do you feel as though your work has paid off or is paying off um, I guess the answer would be yes. <laughs> yeah. But but um, kind of selfishly, I say that because at this point, it's more about like what brings me happiness than it right. is trying to find something that sort of quote unquote pays off. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, like I'm really. I, I was telling the last group. Um, your friend, the other friends, everybody. Um, I was telling them that uh, I'm, I, I find myself more like grateful every day that I go to work. Yeah. Like, like I'm so grateful this is my job. I'm so grateful that I can be an actor for my life's work. You know. And I'm, yeah. Um, so you know, it pays off in a lot of ways that way, but it also pays off that when I'm at a voiceover session, I get to watch a lot of really super talented professionals do what they're best at so it you know and it's fun every once in a while I get a great character like a Batman or a Han Solo or a Dr. Cortex or somebody that's like really pretty epic yeah. and then and then it pays off for me as a fan because I'm also a fan you know it's like that there's yeah. some there's some stupid hair club commercial that's like you know I'm uh, I'm I'm not only a fan, but I'm a member. Or I'm not only a member, but I'm a fan, or I'm the president, or something. But it, it, it's it's kind of like that. It's like I'm not only the actor, but I'm also a fan. So it pays off for me to, you know, like I'm a huge, huge Star Wars fan, and to be able to say that I voiced Han Solo and a bunch of stuff, it's an honor. Yeah, it's like a, it blows me away. I'm like, holy crap! Even if it's two words, you know, it's like I got to. You know, say in a video game, you know, watch your mouth, kid. You know, like or whatever. You know, right. it's like, so yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. So the, the big answer is yes. It's it pays off every day in many many ways. Okay. Besides besides the money side of it, you know, I mean. Right. You know, go ahead. All right. If you hear ice cream truck, 
don't mind that. It's the summer. The ice cream truck just comes around like all the time. But disregarding that, my third question is: Do you think that video games don't have as much effort put into them like they did back in the '90s and or early 2000s? In what way? What do you mean? Like, when games had more personality and charm to it and dedication to it, before all this DLC and all that, oh, excuse me, before DLC and all the microtransactions and all this stuff came into play. Yeah, it seemed like they were maybe a little more simple yeah. before, you know, where, like, you could kind of get to the heart of the game and get to the heart of the characters really quick. Yeah. Now it's, like, it's diluted in a lot of areas like you have these gigantic entire worlds that you're it's cool in a way because you get to explore different sections of, of the games but um, in a way it diluted the character stuff um, but I was saying to those guys also the previous interview is like it depends what game you're playing too it, yeah it does it does if, if it's a first person shooter that's going to be way different than right. a, a platformer you know. yeah yeah exactly alright for my fourth question is, do you like the job of being a teacher as much as being a voice editor? Because I was looking at your Twitter bio, and I noticed that you were also a teacher. Yeah, I teach a couple things. I, I teach um, acting and voice acting, and, uh, and like, you know, the ins and outs of voice acting. But I also teach meditation, which is um, totally different than any of the entertainment stuff. Exactly. So... Um, You'll find that I give you really long answers to these questions, but um, I'll, I'll try to make it short. Um, it's fine. There's no the the the, the, um, the act of being a teacher. Yeah. Always teaches me something. So like even when I'm teaching, I'm learning. So it's always really fulfilling for me to teach something because then I'll step away at the end and go. Yeah, what a good reminder about this or that, or like, hey, I learned something new even about my own craft or about meditation or whatever just by teaching it. So yeah, it's always really great. I love I love teaching anything pretty much. Great. All right. So number five is, if the Crash Bandicoot series were to come back, would you like to do the voice of Doctor Neo Cortex again? Yes. Okay. I felt <clears throat> I felt a lot of power in that. Yes. <laughs> All I know is that I'm. I would I would feel bad if they didn't ask me to do it again oh. if, if, if it came back. Yeah. I, I I love that character. And I, I would I would hate for it to show up again and it not be me doing it. Yeah, <laughs> but a lot of people want you to voice Cortex again. Yeah, I mean I, I guess it's Activision that we just need to get a hold of at this point. I don't even, I don't even want to get started on that company, but. Yeah. I mean, if, if somebody gave me the information as to, like, who to contact at Activision, I'd give them a call. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't have really the time to dig and find that info, but if somebody found out who was running or who, who sort of was in charge of the Crash Bandicoot franchise, I, I'd be happy to call them up and get them fired up again. Maybe a, you know, a show on Nickelodeon or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. Besides the game. Yeah. For number six is, what is your advice to those that want to pursue their dream of becoming a voice actor? Well, number one is get really deep into the acting stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like really, really make it fifth one, second one. Uh, you know, it's called voice acting, so... Exactly. You, you definitely want to, like... The advice would be act, 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 and then act some more. And then when you're really deep into the acting, then start by taking a couple of little workshops with professional voice actors who can kind of highlight the fine-tuning that happens between, like, on-camera acting or stage acting or TV acting mm -hmm. and voice acting, because there's a lot of technical stuff that you have to know as a voice actor, just how to how to, um, how to operate your body, you know, you know, how to get yourself centered, uh, how, how to do physicality without making noise. Yeah. You know, real simple things, but a lot of technical stuff that happens as an actor once you get in front of the mic compared to on camera. Yeah, it's a totally different feeling or experience. Yeah, yeah. 
And I would say also, you know, improv groups. The more improv you can do, the better. Right. Okay. There's... But just, you know, but just keep doing it. And it should be something you love to do. That's another thing that's important because a lot of people are like, oh, I told my friend she has a really cute voice. She sounds like a teenager. And I think she'd be a great voice actor. But then I say, well, how long has she been acting? And they go, well, she doesn't act. And oh. I go, okay, well, she just has a cute voice. Yeah, I have. I see the difference. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not called cute voicing. It's called voice acting. Yeah. And sometimes people will say, like, my friends all tell me I should be a voice actor because I can do, like, a trailer voice or whatever. And I go, well, do you like doing that? Not really. I'm embarrassed. I don't like the sound of my voice. And it's like, well, then maybe voice acting isn't for you. <laughs> yeah. There's four more questions. All right. Number seven being, what is your favorite genre of video games, like platformers, rhythm, shooters, RPGs, etc.? I think it's a split between uh, first-person doesn't always have to be shooters, but like first person driven, like we're oh those type of games, yeah. You know, like where where I always like I like to be the one making the story happen, as opposed to like just being in a world where everything is blowing up and you're trying to kill people and stuff. You know. Yeah. Uh, I also like like getting something as simple as Mario Brothers or whatever, like where you have to like get through stuff and jump things and like. You know, go through a maze and, yeah. you know, where you don't necessarily have to kill a bunch of things to get further into the game. Cause, exactly. You know, I think it's good to have story in the game instead of just like blow shit up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I knew it was going to be, I knew plat the platforms was going to be one of them. Yeah. All right. So, number eight is, this is an interesting one, and I don't know if my subscriber G Man and his friends asked you this, but. Number eight is, how do you feel about Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant? Because those two games are very controversial in the Crash Bandicoot fan base. I like the games personally, but yeah. So what, what, how so are they? Oh man, I'm surprised you didn't hear about this. But a lot of people are, you know, not skeptical, but they, they pretty much hate the, you know, the character designs and... Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're about. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they really made a big change on that, on a couple of them. Right. Um, I kind of like the old designs a little better. Yeah, same. I do too, but I don't personally. I don't mind the recent ones. But I see what you mean. I I prefer the other ones as well. I feel like twin, the Twin Sanity design of Crash Bandicoot and Cortex, and the rest of the cast. I feel like those would still fit if they were still here. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The twin sanity design was, I think, some of their best. Right. But yeah. how do how do you feel about Crash of Titans and Modern Premier, and like in terms of just those two games in general? Um. You know, I think that uh, like, let's see, um, what was the one like Twin Sanity, for example? Yeah. I thought that, like, with Twin Sanity, there was a lot of interaction, a lot of fun throughout the game, you know, and it was a lot of, like, it had a lot of really cool different sections of the game. Yeah. It didn't feel like there was as much of that going on. In Titans and Modern Remune. Cause they, yeah, cause they, it just seemed... No, go ahead. They differentiated themselves from Twin Sanity, like, drastically. Yeah, it didn't seem as exciting. It seems like they got kind of boring a little bit. Yeah, I understand. But um, I still had fun doing them. You know, it was still a lot of fun doing those cutscenes and all that other stuff. Yeah. All right, you ready for 9 and 10? Anytime. Okay, number 9 is, are you currently working on any huge projects? Unless that's confidential, you know, you don't have to tell me at all, but yeah. Well, off the record. Yeah. Which means don't print it or post it. Okay, I'll pause it. Okay, so we're back with this interview. So anyway, uh, so some of the parts uh, that I've done recently are... Uh, I played this Russian hitman named Igor in Dorarara. It's a, it's a new... Um, it's not new, actually. It's an anime that season two is coming out. I'm also directing a really big anime that we'll announce in July at the Anime Expo. And um, 
I just did. Uh, there's a video game called Evolve. Oh. Just, so I play one of the four new characters named Torvald in that uh, video game. And then if anybody been, has been playing Titanfall, I play a couple characters in that, but one is Spyglass, who is the artificial intelligence that basically is with you along the way that's saying, your Titan is ready for launch, and that sort of thing. Oh, wow. And um, just got to do some voices in some big movies, too, so. All right. So, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Okay. You ready for 10? Let's do it. Have you drank a glass of water? Or you... It doesn't matter, but... Okay. Number 10 is... <laughs> number 10 is... And you can end it any way you want. Say whatever you want. I be I would be fucking honored. Excuse my language, but I would be honored if you said my name in his voice. But, number 10 is... Would you do the honors of ending this interview as Dr. Neil Cortex? So, what is, um, <laughs> what, what, do you have a name of your show or anything oh, like that? Oh, my name is Jeremiah, my YouTube name is Jeremiah Isaiah, which is my first uh, middle name. I have, I'm near 5k subscribers and I'm very, if you type in Crash Bandicoot J-E-R or Jeremiah Isaiah on YouTube, Crash Bandicoot is likely to, it's going to pop up because I'm known for that stuff. I've been known for it since 2012 with the whole PlayStation All-Stars crap and yeah. Do you have, does your show have a, a name or it's just Jeremiah Isaiah? My YouTube channel is just Jeremiah Isaiah. This is just an interview that I feel as though my subscribers might enjoy since they love Crash Bandicoot a lot. Are you on Twitter also or no? Yeah, I am. And just under Jerry or Jeremiah Isaiah? What do you, what's your handle there? It's Jeremiah Isaiah. Oh, okay. Cool. You should definitely friend me up on Twitter too or, or follow me on Twitter. And I don't know if you, you know, could do a follow Friday thing for your subscribers, but my uh, Twitter account just got hacked and all, all my followers got leached into another account. Oh. So I, I, I went from like 100,000 followers to 3,500 in like six days. They, 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 did a, they spoofed my account so it looked like it was me. Oh, wow. And then they just leached the, the um, followers onto that account. So I'm still trying to get Twitter to get them back, but it's hard to contact those folks. Yeah. So it's probably easier just to get your subscribers to follow or something. Yeah, I, I am following you. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Dr. Cortex, can I see you for a second? What is it? Uh, yeah, I just need you to come over here for a second um, with doing an interview with Jeremiah. Oh, yes, of course. Jeremiah Isaiah. <laughs> he's quite the interviewer, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pretty good. I had a good time doing the same. Listen, this should be the greatest show ever. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to be pretty good there, Doc. Okay, enough of you, Lex. Where do I sign? No, you don't sign anywhere. You just it, it's just say goodbye at the end of his show. Okay, if I must. Let's consider this a hello. A big hello to all the Dr. Cortex fans. From my best buddy in the world, Jeremiah Isaiah, of course. <laughs> all, all right, Doctor, please step away now. Come on. Wait, I've got more to say. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow, that was that was amazing. You still got it, and it's 2015. <laughs> Holy crap! That still game, got it. That game was released <laughs> in '04. Oh, nice. Dang. Well, we'll uh, let's see if we can bring it back for 2016, huh? Uh, be... personally, look, this is this is what I think. Before the interview ends, I would like to say that I think it's likely. I think not highly likely, I'm not going to get my hopes up like last year, but I think it's likely that we may see something this E3, or if nothing happens this year, this E3, I'm predicting that we will get a 20th anniversary title for Crash Bandicoot next year. That's what I think. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yes, we'd love that, wouldn't we? Hey, back off, man. Come on, <laughs> Everyone would love that. The whole world would break. The internet would shake if a new, a new crash was announced. But oh, uh, that that'd be cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I got a mosey on here. I've uh, my time is up. But um, 
thank you for the interview and hello to all the subscribers out there and uh, my email real easy lex at lexlang.com anyone who wants to put a shout out say hello and follow me on twitter and facebook and all the other good stuff yeah, the, the links to your stuff will be in the uh, description cool cool and, and anyone who was listening wants to find links to the uh, facebook and twitter it's also on my site lexlang.com so feel free to check it all out all right well, all right thanks jeremiah no problem you all heard it this has been jeremiah this has been lex lane talking to each other along with cortex i will catch you guys in the next upload and well uploads come to the channel deuces